So let us solve this problem about bolted connections. For bolted connections, varying anterior out strength at both poles are simultaneously checked. These are the formulas to be used for bearing, while these are the formulas to be used for tear out. As you can see, there is a description on whichever formula will be used. So for our problem, it is not indicated if the deformation at the bolt pole is a design consideration or not. Take note that if this is not indicated in the problem, the standard assumption is to consider that the deformation at the bolt hole is a design consideration. So therefore, for bearing, we will use Rn equals 2.4 dTFU, while for tear out, we will use 1.2 LC T times FU. So now we will write the formulas for the nominal strength. For bearing deformation, we have Rn equals 2.4 dTFU and then for tear out Rn equals 1.2 LCT times FU. Okay, so take note that the governing limit state is always the minimum. So meaning for these two whichever is the lesser value will govern. According to the problem, the values of S1 and S2 are such that tear out is not a concern. So if that is the case, the capacity of tear out should be greater than the capacity of varying deformation in order that tear out will not govern. Okay, because as what we have said earlier, Whichever is the lesser of the two will govern. So therefore, in order for tear out not to govern, it should be greater than the value of 2.4 dTFU. If we're going to factor out 1.2 T times FU on both sides, we have so we have this one. We can now cancel 1.2 T times FU. So we are left with L sub C is greater than 2D. So this is the condition to make sure that tear out will not govern. Okay. So now we can solve for LC. Let us read the definition of L sub C from the code. Clear distance in the direction of the force between the edge of the hole and the edge of the adjacent hole or edge of the material. So we can have several clear distances in a connection. So let's say we analyze the needle plate. In our problem, these are the clear distances. So from this bolt to the edge of the material, this is, let's say we label this as L sub C1, and then from the edge of this bolt to the edge of this bolt, this is L sub C2, and then from the edge of this bolt to the edge of this bolt, since the spacings are the same, we can also label this as L sub C2. So these are the L sub C or the clear distances in our middle plate. Let us now solve for S sub 1 such that we can satisfy this inequality. L sub C1 is greater than 2T. So we will express L sub C1 in terms of S sub 1. So how are we going to do that? So S1, we have to subtract one half of the diameter of the hole. So we have S sub 1 minus one half of the diameter of the hole. So take note, in our problem, the bolts are M22. So the corresponding standard Whole dimension is 24. There is no need to add another 2 millimeter because we are not computing net area. So let us continue. So this should be greater than 2 times the diameter of the bolt, which is 22. 
So therefore, we can now solve test of 1, and that is 56 millimeters. So this is now the value of S1 such that tear out will not go burn on this portion. Okay? So the answer for number 1 is letter C. Next, we repeat the process for L sub C2. Express L sub C2 in terms of S sub 2. To get L sub C2, so we will subtract half of each bolt from each side. So that is equivalent to subtracting one complete bolt hole. So this will be 24. And then this should be greater than 2 times 22. So therefore, S sub 2 is equal to 68 millimeters. Therefore, the answer is letter A. Next, how many bolts are required to resist the load T equals 900 newton? So, in order to determine the number of bolts, we must equate the demand to its capacity or to the capacity of the bolts. So aside from bearing and tear out, another limit state for bolts is the bolt shear. And the nominal strength for bolt shear is simply equal to FMV times AV. Okay? So notice in our figure, the upper plate and the middle plate has different demands. So for the upper plate, the demand is P over 2. And then the... And then for the middle plate, the demand is P. So let us analyze independently the plates. First, we analyze the upper plate. Considering upper plate, we will compute for the governing strength of the bolt. In the previous problem, we have already figured out the value of S1 and S2 such that tear out will not govern. So we will now only consider bearing deformation and bolt shear. So based on the problem, the type of the bolts being used is A325X. So the letter X means that the threads are excluded. So meaning, we are looking for this type of bolts. So the FNV is 469 megapascals. Okay, so let us now solve for the capacity of one bolt in shear. So we have Rn equals FNV 469 and then the area of the bolt is simply pi over 4 times 22 squared. So we only use one area of the bolt because the bolts in the upper plate are subjected to single shear. So let us compute for this one. So Rn equals 178 to 8 to 0.2415 newton.